So I've had the dilemma of our 1977 Argosy being just a little bit too low. These are the original axles underneath here. It's a 24 footer, obviously tandem axle. And I'm about to pull the rear axle out. Pretty simple, obviously take off the wheel. It's still pretty old school hubs. Uh, has the lug bolts versus the lug nuts. That is a three quarter nut, take that off. And then there's one bolt right here, 15 sixteenths. There's a nut on the back side, and there's another one over here that corresponds with that. 15 sixteenths nut on the inside, same thing. And as you can see from the other side, so this is the square tubing. There's a number 10 and number 11 axle. The best I can determine this is a number 10 because it's less than a three inch tube. And uh, we'll be putting a lift kit on this bad boy too because this torsion setup is wasted. The square bushing inside there is just rotten and this sucker rides way too low, even lower than what the Airstream should be riding at. If you have air tools, this makes it a lot easier. Again, 15 sixteenths on that back nut. 15 sixteenths impact socket there. There's the nut and bolt. There's one out right now, the back one, because the drum assembly is in the way. You just have to run your gun from the inside. So this is loose now. And here's the front bolt, which is still under some tension right now because that's the only thing holding this side up. So I end up putting a floor jack underneath here and then uh, I'll remove the other side. But I would definitely keep either a lineup bar or the existing bolt in there. Um, but you'll have to use a floor jack to lift some tension off there. Here we have both of the bolts out. We'll lower the floor jack. And there we have it. One side of the axle is down on the ground safely. And of course I do have a jack stand back here. And of course a wheel chalk up on the, on the front axle. And we'll go over to the other side. And with the bolt still in to hold that in there, I'll use the uh, floor jack on that side, lift it up, take the tension off that bolt, pull the bolt out, and then slowly lower it on the ground. And uh, we're about to have this axle out of here. I have the floor jack placed underneath basically the, uh, the framework of the axle itself. Again, I took the tension off. So now this bolt here, one more pump. Take the tension off. Now this bolt can slide right out of here. There's that bolt right there. And then this one here still has some tension. Lower the jack. I finally got that bolt out. That was kind of a bitch. Bolt had barely any clearance. And the axle's out. There's plenty of plenty of slack here. These are your uh, uh, electric brake lines. And then um, right here. So I'll just disconnect that. And this bad boy is out. Here's your axle out. Look at that, that's just the, uh, the bracketry there. Of course, I just cut the uh, electric brake lines. Inside the square tubing, there's just a big rubber uh, bushing. And uh, this thing being 45 years old is wasted. Apparently their lifespan is 30 years, so this is well past its expectancy. Here are the two brand new axles. There's the old axle. If you look at the direction that this torsion arm is, it's parallel with this bracket right here. That means that the bushing, that square bushing inside here is worn out. If you look at the brand new axle, here's that, that same bracket. However, that arm, granted this is upside down on the pallet, but this arm right here at that angle, um, once it's flipped upside down off this pallet and installed into the, into the trailer, that'll be lifting it up significantly. Here's the tag that Dexter puts on this. It is their number 10. It is a 3,500 pound axle, uh, which is an upgrade from what uh, the 77 Argosy actually came in. Uh, there's a little bit of advertisement there. Wheel equipment in Tucson, uh, phenomenal customer service. Also from Dexter, I decided to do the, uh, the lift kit here. Uh, it says it's 2.63. I was told it was a 2.75 inch, also known as a three inch lift kit. Apparently they're getting very detailed. There's all the numbers you need to know. Just open the box. 
Very nice. All brand new anodized gold hardware. And there's really nothing to it. It's like putting a, putting a lift kit on a truck. That's all it is, pretty stout. Nice gussets right in between here. Very nice. I'm okay with that. Any fabricator could certainly make that, but if somebody's already done their research, you might as well just pay for it. Uh, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than going to uh, a dealership. Here is just a reference. We're at 26 and a half inches to the uh, top of that wheel well. Uh, it's about the best measurement I can get. This is on dirt. Uh, I do not have concrete, but uh, that's what we're looking at right now. And we'll come back and see what it looks like with the lift kit and the new. All right, here's some of the tools that you will need. The anodized bolts that uh, the lift kit came with, uh, 15 sixteenths. There's a 15 sixteenths wrench, box end, and also uh, if, you, if you have pneumatic tools, it's gonna be way easier for you. So 15 16 socket as well for the nut and also, and, um, looks like we're gonna have to drill a hole in the side of the frame of the Airstream. So I have a uh, center punch, my hammer, and then a bunch of drill bits so I can step up into that size. Um, if you have a cordless drill, I'm sure uh, that may suffice, but sometimes real power plugged in is really nice. One of the holes lines up, but the other one doesn't. We'll show you that right Here's now. That block, I already have one bolt in, clearly it's loose. Uh, one hole lines up, and as you can see, the second one does not. So that's where we have to drill a hole, right here where my thumb is. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this bolt right here. We'll get that nice and flush with the bottom of this frame, and then we'll drill it right from the inside out. Okay, that bolt is tight. It was a little difficult to uh, actually hold that in place. The impact gun, the wrench, and there's no way I'd be able to uh, film that. But this is what I was talking about. There's that bolt. There's the existing factory hole. And then right here, you have to drill a new hole. Final size of drill bit that you'll have to step up to is a 21 30 second. Right. The block spacer is installed. All right, now we have the actual slit underneath there. I just used a rolling cart and actually I was just uh, trying to be resourceful. My creeper, my rolling creeper that I've been laying on, I just used that side and it actually worked out quite well. So we will um, put a floor jack underneath the center of the axle. And mind you, we still have the old axle still in place. So there's the floor jack just holding that up. And just for safety concerns, I have jack stands sitting there with the outriggers, other jack stand outriggers, and I have the outriggers out front as well. Safety first here, people. Always read the instructions. I thought it'd be cleaner to be putting the bolts in this way, but because of the clearance on the back side of the bracket, this bolt wouldn't be able to drop through right there. You can already tell from this angle here that uh, I'll have to jack this up quite a ways in order to get that rear tire on. From this angle, this also shows you how far down that axle is. And if you look in the distance, the front axle is mounted to the side versus the block that's mounted to the side rail there of the chassis. And then that block spacer is there. So the front axle is pretty much hitting the bottom of the body, whereas the rear axle, we got plenty of room there. Let's put some wheels on and see what it looks like. Well, there you have it. The rear axle has been replaced. So that's uh, that's a lot of clearance on this rear axle on the left. Very nice, looking forward to doing the front. And there you have it, there's the driver's side. Once again, the rear axle, brand new, front axle, old. Rear axle has the uh, Dexter three inch lift. But lots of clearance in that wheel well. Looking forward to do the front. That's next. You can't argue with that. Previously, I measured from the ground, again, not on concrete, but from the ground, the top of the wheel well, 26 and a half inches. Here we are, 29.58. Let's just call that, you know, because it's not level and it's uh, on dirt. That's a good three inches. Both axles installed. 
with the three inch lift kit. Don't forget those jack stands, safety first. You don't want your air stream to fall on top of you. Don't forget that you have to uh, rewire the trailer brakes. Uh, Cut some new fresh copper there and then use one of these uh, one of these holes right here just to tuck that wire in there so it's out of harm's way so you can reach back through here and then we can crimp them together. Wouldn't hurt to wrap those connectors with some electrical tape and just at least zip tie it to there so it won't get in the way of the wheel. Well, there it is, the finished product. Very, very happy with it. Three inch lift, plenty of ground clearance. Look at the ground clearance on the ass end right there, beautiful. And uh, while I was underneath there, all the uh, all four outriggers, now uh, I'll definitely have to be stacking some blocks underneath there. But um, I was underneath there and I figured I'd just get a little paintbrush and some, uh, some grease and grease up those threads. They're just getting a little old, but look at all that. All that room in the wheel well. Beautiful. Again, this is not on concrete. However, look at that tape. Maybe we'll call that 30 and a half wherever the tire sits in the dirt. But uh, that's pretty impressive. We were at 26 and a half before we started the, uh, the lift. Beautiful. Very nice. Easy enough. Here's the view from the bottom. Pretty self-explanatory. Two new axles, number 10 Dexters, brakes, hubs, bearings, everything complete with the three inch Dexter left. If you have a drill, if you have some impact tools or even hand tools and a floor jack, some jack stands, you could do this yourself. Don't go to the dealer for six grand. This was done for under $3,000, no joke.